Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. Civil rights group, voting rights, activists, voters, members of the Democratic Party, as well as this person right here, have been pleading with President Biden to forcefully advocate for the abolition of the filibuster for the sake of voting rights legislation. The Republican Party has weaponized the filibuster to stall not only voting rights, but also Biden's infrastructure plan. Despite the Republicans' clear intention to not allow any Democratic legislation to pass, Biden still believes that voting rights legislation can pass without abolishing the Senate rule. Even though Biden acknowledged that the power of the filibuster is being abused, he still believes that it should be protected. I've been saying for a long, long time, the abuse of the filibuster is pretty overwhelming. There's no reason to protect it other than you're gonna throw the entire Congress into chaos and nothing will get done. All right. Nothing at all will get done. Yeah. And there's a lot at stake. The most important one is the right to vote. Interestingly enough, Biden claims that the only reform he would make to the filibuster is an old rule that required individuals with opposition to a bill to physically remain on the floor of the Senate to air their grievances. During the town hall, Biden also said that the proposal of the filibuster reform would give Republicans an excuse not to debate the passing of his legislative agenda. It is becoming more apparent every day that the Republicans may successfully hold our democracy at a standstill until at least the 2022 midterms, unless Biden and the Democrats come up with a strategy that negates the Republican stalemate. Joining us to discuss is co-founder of Indivisible and co-author of We Are Indivisible, a blueprint for democracy after Trump, Ezra Levine. Ezra, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You know, something that just stuck in my craw that Biden said when he was defending the filibuster is that he said people will find a way to vote. You can't stop people from voting. There is nothing that could be further from the truth. And using the, the, the turnout during the pandemic as a rationale for why you would not want to protect voting rights is, is outrageous to me. How did you take what Biden was saying about the filibuster last night at that town hall. Look, he's saying that democracy is under threat, but other people have to take care of it. And it's just unacceptable. Look, it, you think about looking for this president's LBJ moment. He wants to be a historic figure. We want him to be a historic figure. That's why we worked our butts off to get him into office and get him a democratic trifecta. But LBJ didn't tell MLK, hey, I know Bull Connor is sick and dogs on protesters, but you can out-organize them. You can just out-organize them and get folks to vote. Of course he didn't. You know what he did? Ultimately, he got behind the Voting Rights Act in 1965. He overcame over a month of filibuster threats from Southern segregationists, and he got it passed and implemented into law. We can't have a president who is saying democracy is facing an existential crisis, and hey, do you want to get lunch? No, we need a president who both recognizes the problem and then puts the full weight of the presidency behind solving that problem. He is doing that for infrastructure right now. He's putting through a very impressive set of legislation proposals right now, but he's not doing that on democracy. And so we want to see him fight for it as hard as he's fighting for those roads and bridges. But, and the Roland Bridges uh, point is a really important point because what he is essentially saying, if not outright saying, is that getting rid of the filibuster would make a mess of things and nothing would get done on my agenda. He, I mean, it is a very short-sighted, self-interested rationale for not getting rid of the filibuster. I will not be able to remake the American infrastructure and go down in history as the president who does that if I forcefully call for the elimination of the filibuster and go down as the president who saved black and brown people's right to vote. That is basically what he's saying. Am I reading that wrong? Look, I, I think it's very clear where he is putting his energy. He is, he is going to Capitol Hill. He is traveling to North Carolina and Wisconsin and Georgia to talk about what he's talking about infrastructure. That is where he is putting his energy. So. I agree with you. It seems as if he is saying, well, I don't want to work on democracy because I've got 
really my hands full with this infrastructure bill. And what we're saying is it doesn't matter how smooth the roads are. It doesn't matter how beautiful the bridges are that you build. If people can't vote in 2022, if the Republicans are setting up to disregard the results of the election in 2024, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. We need both. We need investment in American infrastructure and we need investment in American democracy. That is how we are going to have a pluralistic democracy going forward. The alternative to that is a near future where the roads to America's internment camps are well paved. And that's not a future I want to live in. Hey, right. and, and, and it seems to me that the, the grand miscalculation that Democrats are making here is that is to labor under the assumption that if they don't get rid of the filibuster, the filibuster will never be gotten rid of. When in fact, if the, if the shoe were on the other foot and Republicans had a slim majority in the Senate and also controlled the House and the presidency, they would not hesitate one moment to do exactly what the Democrats are, are now tiptoeing around and not, don't want to do. And what are, what are Democrats going to say when they look back and say, we had a golden moment where we could have done this and done for a really good reason, and now Republicans are trashing a filibuster to do something horrible? Look, Charles, the shoe was on the other foot. It was on the other foot near a handful of years ago. Mitch McConnell faced a filibuster of Donald Trump's Supreme Court justices because the filibuster, remember, applied to Supreme Court justices until exactly. when? Until Mitch McConnell faced that. And what did he do? He eliminated the filibuster for Supreme Court justices and Donald J. Trump appointed three reactionaries to the Supreme Court. So we've seen what happens when the Republicans come against a procedural barrier to getting their agenda through. And they say, oh, nope. No, thank you. We're just going to appoint our Supreme Court justices. If ever, if ever the filibuster were to stand between Mitch McConnell and deregulating big business or passing major tax cuts for his donors or passing egregious uh, uh, reactionary policies that are on the Republican agenda, he would immediately snap his fingers and say, OK, it's gone. Let's move forward with our legislative agenda. The idea that the Democrats are not going to do this in order to pass democracy-saving legislation should make us all furious. But I do want to be clear. Look, we can be disappointed in what Biden is saying right now, and we should be. We want to see him in the fight, and we should be asking him to get in the fight. But ultimately, Joe Biden doesn't have a vote on what happens to the filibuster. The folks who have a vote are in the U.S. Senate. So the question right now in front of Congress is not what does Joe Biden do. Right. It is when does Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer schedule a vote on filibuster rules reform? And does he do that before the August recess? If we do not do this yeah, before I, the I, August listen, recess, I, listen, I, 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 Ezra, I agree with you. That, that, I agree with you that Biden does not have a vote in this. However, uh, the power of the bully pulpit is a real power, and it translates into real actions. And the fact that for the last six months or before, Republicans have been drumming away at this idea that the elections are faulty, that we have to shore them up, we have to do everything we can to eliminate fraud that doesn't exist, and that they are hiding behind this message that they have been carrying out for the last six months, which is letting this happen in state legislatures, means that there has been no serious counterweight to that argument Every day, every night, drum beat saying this is not true and I will do everything to protect those votes. I am not saying that this is always on Biden's shoulders. I'm not saying he has a vote in the Senate. I am simply saying that there is a rhetorical weapon in this war that is not being used on the liberal side of that ledger. Look, Charles, you'll find no argument for me on that. I think if you think of the major legislative accomplishments of any presidential administration, Republican or Democrat, in modern American history, I cannot think of an example where the president was not directly involved in making the argument for that legislation. And we currently do not have a president who is traveling around the country or engaging in debates or going to Congress saying, hey, not only is this voter suppression Although at the state level would. horrible. What's that? Although he said he, that he would, he was gonna take it on the road. Remember he said that? 
he, he did indeed, and what we saw was one single speech in Philadelphia, a single speech that included a good description of the threats to democracy, but then no description of what the White House was going to do about it. It's clear that he understands the the challenge that we're up against with this Republican voter suppression at the at the state level. What's not clear is how committed this White House is to actually protecting our democracy in this moment. And I 100% agree with you. That bully pulpit is a tool they can and should use, and we hope they get there because time is running out. And here's the thing. We only have about a minute left. Here's the thing that worries me, Ezra, and I hope it worries you just as much as you probably thought about this even more than I do. The problem is domino effect. People keep looking at this set of voter restrictions as if that is the end rather than it being the beginning. If these things are allowed to pass and the courts don't knock them down and a, and a, and a uh, Congress that is filled with Democrats controlled in both houses by Democrats do not pass legislation to block them, then every other state looks at that and goes, huh, I was thinking about restricting the right to vote. And it looks like we can get away with it. Why not do it? Right? And so that, yeah, is, that, that is the real danger here. I, I look, I think it's danger on top of danger. I think we have not yet seen the gerrymandered maps that are going to come out of these Republican states in Texas, in Arizona, in Florida, in throughout the country where there are Republicans who have control over this process, they are going to gerrymander themselves into a majority next year. And there is something that can stop them. It's called the For the People Act. We can indeed stop it. That's the immediate danger. Absolutely. What comes next? You're exactly right. What comes after they've gerrymandered themselves and voter suppressed themselves into a majority in the House or also the Senate in 2022? What happens in 2024? Why do we think that the state legislatures that gerrymandered and voter suppressed themselves into power in 2022 are going to stop there? What's going to happen in 2024 when there's another close election in Arizona and Georgia? You think they're just going to certify those election results? God, of course not. It's very clear right. what their strategy is. They are building towards a system where an increasingly small, white, conservative major uh, minority is wielding power over the majority. And they are doing this uh, this dismantling of democracy because they understand that they are a small minority supporting an unpopular agenda. Now, they'll keep doing that until we stop them, until we and the majority stop them. And that's what we want to pull Biden into. We want to be him to be part mm -hmm. of leading this majority in defense of democracy. Mm -hmm. Ezra Levine, thank you for bringing the right amount of outrage and concern to this conversation. And thank you for joining me tonight. More Prime after this short break. <laughs>